correct. You know, I took the bait that Putin in 99 had bombed his own apartment buildings, and he still may have. He was the vice president. He needed to be able to attack the Chechens that were working for the West, trying to peel away several countries away from Russia. I'm not defending the bombing of apartment buildings. They did bomb apartment buildings that were working apartment buildings, not elderly, so that most people weren't in the buildings when they did it. Still terrible. And Moscow police, or a suburb of Moscow police, caught FSB in a building with a plastic explosive, and then they said, oh, it's part of a drill. So there's a good chance Russia has engaged in false flags. That is, Vladimir Putin has when he was vice president. But there's not total proof of that. But I was told by a lot of other Russian experts that, no, that was done uh, to actually destabilize Russia and to try to uh, take the fight away from Chechnya into Russia itself. But that's not the effect it had. But that's why I say we can't sit here and completely trust Vladimir Putin. All I know is Putin's not trying to take my guns. All I know is Vladimir Putin is not trying to force vaccines on me or GMO. Uh, all I know is Vladimir Putin's not trying to teach my seven-year-old uh, how she can be a man. Uh, all I know is, is that Vladimir Putin's not trying to make me drink fluoride. Vladimir Putin is not funding ISIS and ISIL and all the rest of these Western-backed groups. And Vladimir Putin's not trying to bring in a one-world government. So, we have the headline in the New York Post, Obama has turned Putin into the world's most powerful leader. And they, and they make it political, and certainly Obama's part of that, so you could say that and be fair. But isn't it globalism has made Putin look like a world leader or the predominant world leader? Because globalism is such a miserable tyranny. By the way, it's not a failure, though. You know, Putin said, oh, the West has failed in what it's done. I guess it's failed to have al-Qaeda and ISIS take over. I guess that's true, but not failed in funding these groups. That was their plan. So what do you think the larger geopolitical plan is? And what do you think is going to happen now that Obama's announcing they're not going to be backing Syrian rebels anymore against Assad? Is that a fake statement? Is that a fraud? Is that a f faint uh, is that a zig when they zag? Is that a fake handoff? Is that a sneak play? Or what does that signify? And what do you think the next geopolitical move is going to be? We've already seen Soros and NATO take down Ukraine and spin it that Russia did it. What's coming next? I want to take your phone calls straight ahead. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Infowars.com is full of key stories right now. Check it out. I don't normally talk about movies that are concerning entertainment because that's a diversion, but so much of it's scripted. And in that, people can really train themselves to see the propaganda and then to tell others about it. In fact, I found it's easier to wake the public up exposing propaganda in movies and in books and on television than it is to get them to wake up to propaganda involved in politics. And here's an example. Did NASA time its Mars announcement to coincide with the new movie, The Martian, starring Matt Damon? That's Yahoo News Associated Press. And Ridley Scott, who's a great director, I can't wait to see the movie, said, I knew there was water months ago. Well, we knew there was water on Mars 100-plus years ago with telescopes. There were white ice caps on its northern and southern hemisphere visible in 1900 or before. People 300 years ago thought that there was canals and water on it because of the rivers they could see. We just know most of the rivers are dry. But, yes, the probes have proven there's running water in the summer months. And it comes up out of the ground like springs when it gets up above 50 degrees or so on Mars. So that's what's going on on Mars. But it's just, oh my gosh, is this all a PR stunt? Gee, was the Pope getting in the new Fiat, the larger Fiat? You think that was a stunt from Italy? I wonder. 
gee, the police opening the line up, letting a little girl run up to the Pope, it was obviously staged. He was ready for it. Anybody could see it was staged. It was bad acting. We said it was staged. Mark Zuckerberg had it censored, well, I guess, with his people. He admitted that at the U.N. hearing Saturday that they had censor any criticism of open borders in America or in Europe. And they report people that do to the German police and folks are arrested. I mean, think about the tyranny in Germany. No free speech. And we came out and said, the Pope kid, what they're not telling you, it's totally fake. The day it happened. Then it got taken down. It got blocked. Kit Daniels came out and then talked about it more with Darren McBreen when he hosted the Nightly News. So not only is this stuff staged... When you try to expose that you're being manipulated, they censor you. Now, nobody's going to censor us if we talk about clearly NASA coinciding a great promotion of space travel and travel inside the solar system to our nearest neighbor, fourth rock out from the third rock. Certainly, that's the type of propaganda we need to see, promoting human exploration, trailblazing, making astronauts heroes again. The word propaganda has been made synonymous with lying. No, that's black propaganda. Propaganda is simply material that promotes your point of view. So I put out propaganda all day about the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, property rights, medical freedom, Mother Nature supplements, my relationship with Christ, because it's what I believe, it's what makes me feel good, it's what I've had good experiences with. I'm trying to share information with people. I've been down on the hike and bike trail before at, at a really busy waterfall, and I was sitting there talking to a group of people, and I said, you know, about 500 yards down is an even bigger waterfall, but you got to walk further, and there's hardly anybody there. And guess what the unanimous response is? Shh, we want to go down there. Don't tell everybody. And I kind of get that. You find a fishing hole that's really the best at some national park or state park. You don't want to tell everybody where the fish are at or next they'll all be there. So maybe I'm a party pooper. But the globalists don't want to build bigger economies so that everybody can be successful. They want smaller economies they control so they can dictate total terms to everyone. We're going to launch the phone system, and I'm going to give the phone number out. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. And I specifically want to get your take on Putin's address versus Obama's address and the media rightfully saying here in the U.S. that Putin is now the leader of the world compared to Obama. In the past, American presidents were the leaders of the free world and most of the world hailed their support towards America because China was so nightmarishly evil, Soviet Union was so out of control bad, We've got a crew member who, I guess, immigrated here when she was young from Russia. We're going to interview her soon. And she was just telling us during the break, she's going to do a piece tonight that will air tomorrow, where she's going to, in the actual Russian, tell you what Putin said. And I've seen this in the Russian news as well. Their transcripts are different than ours. Putin said at the UN, your government's behind Al-Qaeda and ISIS, and how dare you do this, and we're going to fight it, and you know, you're really corrupt. And by the time it's on U.S. news, it's been watered down. This is the level of deception they're putting everybody under. So it goes from light stuff like the Martian being released uh, right as NASA announces um, their big Mars mission. Uh, I mean, of course that's going on. That's propaganda, but it's white propaganda. It's pro-human, pro-exploration propaganda. But still, they should admit they did it on purpose, just out of respect for the public. Then you've got deceptive stuff like the Pope and the little girl, and then you've got really deceptive stuff where Zuckerberg comes out and tries to stop people from exposing what's going on and then admits it at the UN.
talking to the German chancellor. And then the deception gets even worse where they take what Vladimir Putin says and twist it. No wonder Americans are so ignorant politically because we're just bathing in disinformation. Let's talk to the watcher in FEMA Region 9. I guess formerly uh, there in the Pacific Northwest. He wants to talk about Putin's speech. Thanks for calling. Alex, he sounded so much like you. It wasn't for the translation on RT that I, I would have thought you were on the stage. Well, the truth's the truth. It is. And I, I was so excited. My wife thought I was out of my mind. Uh, <laughs> but I was like, wow, okay, the jig is up. And then when it came to Obama's speech, I just turned him off. I don't even want to listen to the lies. I just, because all he does is spout forth lies and then the media just, Plays it up. Well, we're going to play what he had to say. I've got the transcript here. He came and said, we come in peace. We love you. Get in the candy truck. Get in the ice cream truck. I have a puppy. I mean, he basically just said, we love you, Russia. Please stop attacking everyone. Please stop being evil. Please help us fight ISIS while they run it. While Putin's like, okay, I'm there battling him. Join me. It's just total inversion of reality. It is. I have friends in Ukraine, and one of my friends was helping me translate the actual uh Russian version of the and is pretty much spot on. But when during the Ukraine crisis, when it occurred, she flew over there the Thursday before it happened and when everything blew up and her and a friend were watching this basically a mock military action between the Ukrainian army and the Russian army. But they were all Ukrainians. OK. So they watched it, and these guys come together, and they t they tackle and capture these Ukrainian troops. And then when the cameras rolled away, they all stopped, started shaking hands, patting each other on the back, and I go, what? She says, like, what are they so doing? So she says hey, she thought she saw staged stuff being shot ahead of the so-called revolution being launched days later. It was two days after it started. Oh, she watched later that night, she watched it on the news with her friend, and her friend's like, whoa, 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 that's not what happened. And she goes, yeah. When she came back two weeks later after having to go through a whole lot of stuff to get out of there, um, she she called me up and said, we've got to talk in person. I said, okay, what's going on? She goes, I, would, I can't tell you. I said, right. She gets over and she tells me all of this. And I was like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Alex is saying the same thing. It's all staged. But what's going on over there, it's just like, you know, the Victoria Newland stuff where she said F the EU and all that. And they were picking out who was going to be the leader. I showed her that and she her, her face dropped. She, uh, she was like, oh, my God, what's going on? It's, it's insanity. And our government, which I don't like to call our government, it's our occupiers, like you say, are orchestrating almost everything that's going on in the world. It's bad right now. It certainly is. And, and Russia is grabbing its interest in the country. The West is trying to get its interest. The issue is this is Russia's doorstep. It used to be part of Russia. And our government overthrew the elected government and then put a bizarre white supremacist group in that actually hails Hitler. And then our news had the nerve to call Putin Hitler and claim that the Russians were like Hitler I mean, even for Americans, people should see through that. But the Russians were the main group that fought Hitler and lost 20 million people. It's it's just, it's so crazy that not all the Western Ukrainians are bad people. And they have real beefs with what the Russians did to them under Lenin and Stalin. Absolutely. But now to resurrect the, the, the Nazi movement in Ukraine from World War II and put it in charge is just crazy. But what do you expect from George Soros, who told CNN, Fareed Zarkaria, that, yes, I was key in my foundations with what you're now seeing over there today. I am one the main person behind it. Yes, I'm very proud. Another bizarre Nazi collaborator who's Jewish. You can't make this up. It's like Spectre. Nobody's who they seem. Funding actual grandkids and kids of Nazis to run around and murder everybody. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. And that's why America's lost so much of the moral high ground. And then we have NATO generals shooting their mouths off about how we can defeat Russia easily. Let's just have a war.